Well, good afternoon. And uh, I will be presenting uh, the annual update uh, from our EGP project, which is entitled Cumulative Effects of Resource Development on Mining Impacted Watersheds. The uh, mining impacted watersheds that uh, we're studying are in the uh, cobalt mining camp of uh, northeastern Ontario. The uh, cobalt camp was the scene of fairly intense silver mining activity throughout most of the 20th century. Uh, cobalt uh, was uh, a valuable byproduct of the uh, silver mining. Now, with the uh, push uh, on uh, critical metals, there's renewed interest in the cobalt uh, mining camp, uh, not for silver, but for uh, cobalt, the secondary mineral this time. But the question now is, uh, if there is new resource development in the cobalt camp, how do you go about assessing the cumulative environmental effects? So our project uh, seeks to address a number of scientific questions. Uh, perhaps the first one is, how do you go about assessing environmental impacts of new resource development against a brownfield legacy of uh, fairly pervasive contamination due to 90 years of unregulated mining activity. There's uh, mine waste scattered all over the place. Uh, another important question is, uh, what are the pre-mining geochemical baselines of soils, sediments, vegetation, and waters uh, in watersheds that are already mineralized. Uh, these are important, for example, for setting remediation goals at contaminated sites. Um, <clears throat> can lake sediments uh, provide reliable chronology of different phases of resource development in a mining impacted watershed? For example, what do they say about changes in technology for recovering metals, uh, different milling approaches? With reference to climate change, uh, will extreme weather events associated with climate change enhance the remobilization of uh, mining waste and contaminants? Fundamental to our project has been uh, partnerships uh, with the uh, industry, uh, particularly Agnico Eagle Mines, uh, who have given us free reign to uh, conduct our research on their properties uh, throughout the uh, cobalt camp. And also I'd like to highlight our, our collaboration with Story Environmental, a local consulting company. Um, throughout the pandemic so far, they have carried out field work under contract for us uh, because we were unable to get out there to the field uh, because of travel restrictions. In return, they have provided in-kind support uh, by drilling uh, core holes in mine tailings for us. And they've also provided logistical support for uh, March 2022 Lake Sediment Coring uh, Campaign. Science task one of our project is concerned with uh, contaminated groundwater discharging to uh, receiving surface waters. Specifically, uh, we're focusing on uh, point sources of mine impacted groundwater discharging from anthropogenic uh, features, uh, contributing high loadings, metal loadings to the environment. And the research question we're interested in um, is uh, about concentration discharge relationships for these point sources of mine drainage. For example, how will metal or metalloid mobilization be affected by extreme flow events related to climate change? Now, concentration discharge relationships are increasingly being used to characterize the effects of flow variability on weathering, chemical weathering of uh, metal bearing minerals and the mobilization of contaminants. To uh, study this question, we're conducting high frequency monitoring of flow and chemistry uh, of uh, contaminated mine waters that are discharging from uh, uh, shaft 98, which um, on the photo on the right shows a flume that we constructed at the discharge point from shaft 98. Uh, and the, just the flume is used to measure flow. And here we have a hydrograph of flow measured at uh, shaft 98. 
and it shows uh, spikes in flow as you would expect at the spring freshet of 2021 on the left and the spring freshet this year uh, on the uh, extreme right. But in between, we see that there are spikes uh, of flow, uh, for example, in July of 2021 and a lesser spike in uh, December of uh, 2021. We uh, have some early mine water chemistry results. They were delayed because of the procurement process, but the, these results show that arsenic concentrations in the mine drainage range between seven and 800 ppb, and concentrations of cobalt, nickel, silver, and zinc are also highly elevated. So this is a really toxic, uh, toxic soup. Task two of our project is concerned with legacy contaminants in wetlands and lake environments. Uh, specifically, we're interested in the concentration and speciation of silver, arsenic, cobalt, mercury, nickel, antimony in mine wastes, in uh, near surface sediments, pour waters, and surface waters downstream and upstream of mining impacted areas. Uh, we're also conducting uh, micro paleontological uh, investigations of lake sediments to evaluate the ecological response uh, to uh, these metal uh, contaminants and also the cumulative effects of mining on aquatic biota. Some of the highlights of task two this past year. <clears throat> We've uh, completed uh, most of our analyses on core samples from two boreholes drilled in tailings at Crosswise Lake, and these holes were drilled in March of 2021. We've drilled an additional borehole in Crosswise Lake's uh, tailings last October, and uh, in particular, I'd like to highlight the uh, successful sediment coring uh, program completed on Lake Temiskaming this past March, where we obtained duplicate cores from nine sites in water depths up to uh, 85 meters. Here are some uh, results from the Crosswise Lake study. This the satellite image shows Crosswise Lake there in the middle of your screen with uh, these deltas, if you will, of tailings that encroach on the lake. Uh, from uh, five different mills, uh, uh, just simply dumped the tailings into the lake. And we drilled um, boreholes right through these tailings to into the underlying sediments at some of the locations you see on your screen. And here are some of the results of the uh, chemistry, the geochemistry in these boreholes for mercury, lead, antimony, and zinc. And I guess uh, the take home message here is that the metal concentrations in the tailings are uh, very high and in stark contrast with concentrations observed in underlying sediments and uh, glacial clays. Here are some uh, photos from the lake sediment coring campaign on Lake Temiskaming, which involved Mike Parsons from GSC Atlantic, uh, Alex Normando, uh, and Tom Carsons, also from GSC Atlantic, as well as our colleague uh, Josué Joutzi from GSC Quebec. The uh, satellite image on the right uh, shows the location of the uh, core samples in Lake Temiskaming. It also shows Far Creek, which drains the, uh, the uh, mining impacted area around Cobalt. And the core samples were uh, situated so as to investigate uh, any uh, transported uh, metal contamination in the, in the lake sediments. And I'd also draw your attention to the dashed line in white, um, which shows the Temiskaming West Shore Fault, uh, which controls uh, the bathymetry of the lake. We see there's a very shallow plateau just offshore, Far Creek, and then water depths increase uh, quite dramatically. So it was uh, quite a technologically challenging uh, sampling campaign, but which uh, 
the team uh, brought off uh, quite successfully. Task three of our project is concerned with the mineralogy of mine waste and other solid phases. And this year's highlight really has been the work of Melissa Turcotte, a master's student at Queen's University, supervised by Heather Jamieson and uh, Mike Parsons. Uh, Melissa is studying the micromineralogy of mine tailings and effects of vegetation on metal mobility. And here's a sample from some of her uh, results from uh, field work last summer. This figure shows uh, the uh, mercury content in tailings, the gray bars, and in pond sediments, the red bars, and also uh, mercury content of vegetation. Um, the roots of horsetails, the little orange dots, and uh, the shoots of horsetails in green. And what we see are very high mercury concentrations in particularly in pond sediments, but also a strong uptake of mercury uh, into the sh uh, roots of these horsetails that grow on the tailings. Uh, task four <clears throat> uh, is being led by um, Suzanne Bouchemay, our collaborator at Health Canada, and she is investigating health risks from metals and metalloids and airborne dust from tailings impoundments. This past year, she's been involved mainly with the development of methodologies for the geochemical characterization of uh, nanoparticles of, of dust. Finally, uh, Tom Al at the University of Ottawa and his graduate student, uh, Cole Fisher, have been studying weathering processes in cobalt type silver nickel cobalt arsenide tailings. And this has involved uh, mineralogical analyses of both primary and secondary minerals in core samples obtained from the Cart Lake uh, tailings uh, deposits. And the student Cole is on the home stretch there writing up his uh, master's thesis. And uh, with that, I'll conclude my presentation and thank you for your attention.